Hi, I'm Chris Southern and today we're going to take a look at the Bridget software, part of the Smart Collaboration solution. If we take a look at the screen here, we can actually see the Smart Collaboration bar at the top, which has the Bridget logo in the top corner. If we quickly go through what this toolbar allows us to do, you can see here we have the meeting room name. You can actually adjust that to whatever name you want to set for the meeting. So as I'm in meeting room two, we put it as meeting room two for today. Next to it, we have our security code. So you can see it's a six digit code. That code changes every time you start a meeting and is also encrypted from a security point of view. Next to it, we have the number of people in the meeting, which at the moment I haven't uh, started the meeting, so we haven't got anybody on board yet, but shortly we'll see that. We also have audio facility here because Bridget is capable of VoIP as well, so you can use that for your vocal communications. Share screen, at the moment I don't have the share screen selected because until I see the group of people that I want to deal with, I'm not gonna share the screen. Once I get the group of people, I hit share screen, and they'll be able to share my screen on any device such as an iPad, a laptop, another desktop or even another smart board. At the end here we have the menu bar, again designed to be very easy to use, not over complicated. So on here we have facilities for things like the ability to join another meeting, you can leave a meeting, it has a video window, so should you want to see the person at the other end, we can bring up a uh, window very similar to this size here which will allow you to bring in up to four webcam feeds. Also the audio settings are in here so if you want to make it so that you can speak and the others can hear you but you don't want feedback all those are in simple tick box options within the advanced settings. The beauty of Bridget is it's very simple, very easy to use, and it's not a power-hungry program. You can run this on something as simple as a Pentium 4 PC. The software allows you to take whatever is on screen, or if you're running the meeting from a laptop, whatever's on your laptop, and basically broadcast it, as we call it, to any other member of your team or, or other companies that you deal with up to a maximum of 500 people. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we actually do some conferencing using the Bridget software. The key to Bridget is the fact that we use it predominantly for data rather than for VoIP or for video. It can be used for that but its strength is data. So if you want to integrate it to an existing system such as WebEx or you know, other Cisco products or Polycom and things like that the beauty of the Bridget is it will work alongside your existing VC but give you collaboration on data. And the collaboration is live. So instead of just having a window with some information on that you can discuss, with our system you'll actually be able to pick up pens, a mouse or a pointer and actually annotate live into the document as if you were sat in the same room. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually launch a meeting, which we've done automatically on this one because the Meeting Pro software will launch a meeting, and then we're going to invite other people to the meeting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to invite one of my colleagues on an iPad to join my meeting so that when I work on the screen, you'll be able to see from the iPad the information on my screen passing over to the iPad. The beauty again because of the data that we're using is I'm going to be working on my PC in this building on a wireless connection and the iPad's actually going to be working on 3G. The reason we're doing that is 3G is not the strongest data network in the world so it'll help prove the fact that this will work quickly and efficiently wherever the other person is, whether they be out on the road, in another office or even in another country. So to do this we've got the meeting we've got the meeting number and what I can do is I can simply ask somebody to join my meeting by sending them an email invite. Now I'm not going to do this in this case because with the iPad there's a free app so if you go to the app store within the iPad you can download the Bridget app free of charge and then you simply need the server name of the company that are running the Bridget or hosting the Bridget. So in this case, my colleague has that detail, so he'll be able to join the meeting simply by going to the Bridget app, which we'll see shortly, selecting my meeting and keying in the number. Once he's done that, it will ping up here to tell me that he's joined the meeting, at which point I can share the screen.
So you can see there it actually comes up and tells me that Tim has joined. If I simply press on the icon for the person there, you can see that I'm in the meeting and Tim's in the meeting. We actually have the facility here also to do instant chat. So if you want to do some instant chat prior to the meeting or you want to bring something up within the meeting, you can use that. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a whiteboarding session and I want to discuss some information with Tim on the whiteboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press share screen. You'll see my screen will go grey for a second with some blue writing saying it's preparing to share. And now on Tim's iPad, he'll be able to see the same screen as me. So if I pick up the pen and say to Tim, welcome to the meeting, Tim will now see that coming up on his screen. Now, that could be looking at VC people. They could say, well, obviously we can transmit data. So we could link a PC to a codec and the information on the screen is passed to the other end, which is fine. But what happens when I bring something up on the screen which has got a number of selections or something like that and I want my team to tell me which area they think we should go with? At this point, we'd have to now get a pen and paper, make a note, discuss it via VC, what we think, somebody would write it down, it would get changed, the email, and a week later it would get out. In this scenario, I can say to Tim, who's working remotely, can you please select the option that you think will work best for our team? And you can see there now, Tim's ticked the selection using the iPad with the floating tools. So we're now getting real-time collaboration. We can do this in whiteboarding, or alternatively, I can switch out to this. If we were a sales team, for example, we could go to something like an Excel spreadsheet. Once the spreadsheet's up on screen, again, I could write some numbers on, or I could ask Tim now to write on his iPad a number for me, or circle an area, and work on the spreadsheet. So it's real-time collaboration on a document. And that can be done with up to 500 people. And as I've said before, it can be any IT device, such as PC, desktop, another smart device, or even an iPad.